Welcome to the Swag Zone, a show that's dedicated to the ins, the outs, the ups, and the downs of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. If it's good, we'll talk about it. If it's bad, we'll talk about it. If it's happening, we'll talk about it. The Swag Zone, only on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Let us join this week's episode. And welcome back to the Swag Zone. The radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince, here with you. As you know, we use the Swag Zone to cover the ins and outs of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. This week will be no exception to the rule. We are always glad to have joined us on the conversation, and it is none other than the guru himself, the godfather of basketball, Coach Van Petaway. How are you doing today, sir? Coach, I am highly favored, and I'm blessed. Uh... God has given us another great day, and I'm just, I just feel blessed. After visiting Selma, Alabama, and watching, seeing that destruction, I'm, I'm blessed. God has really taken us to another level. No doubt about it. And, of course, uh, with everything that has been going on throughout the course of the week, uh, Martin Luther King's celebration, it took long enough for it to get acknowledged as a federal holiday. But now that it's here, we're going to take it and embrace it and keep running till we can't run no more. When you think on Dr. King, um, uh, what the one word that, if you could, wrap him up on the impact he's had in your life? I would, I would use the word awesome because the, the, the things that he fought for has given me and many others an opportunity to live a great life. I mean that the the we're we are expanding and we are doing our best because they laid the foundation. This man did it and he did it from the pulpit. He did it with nonviolence. He did it so that the next generations would have a better life. And it's coming to fruition. No doubt about it, sir. No doubt about it. Of course, he was born on January 15th, celebrated him on the second Monday of each month. I'm sorry, of each month. It should be of each month, but of each January. But there's also another iconic uh, person, at least in my opinion, um, that some may be aware or not be aware, but January 17th was his birthday. And by far, he is the original GOAT of right. any sport. And I'm talking about Muhammad Ali. This man was phenomenal, a total career boxing record of 56 wins and five losses. And he talked that talk, walked that walk, and backed it up. And even before there was a such thing as a prime time or uh, any uh, Hollywood Henderson, you had Muhammad Ali. Coach, I know uh, uh, that you are an athletic whiz and, and, and keep your finger on the pulse of everything, but you as myself, of course, you're a little bit dated than I am. I got a chance to see this man in and out the ring. What do you think of when you hear Muhammad Ali? Well, it's just, well, it's just like you just said. He's the greatest of all time. He was the first big-time entertainer. You know, boxing is supposed to be a a, a brutal sport. I mean, it is a brutal sport. But what he did, he showed people that he could do more than just box. Uh, Muhammad Ali did a lot for racism. In other words, what he did, because of his personality, he brought all people together. All right? And then the thing that I really admire him for this man sacrificed his career for what he believed in. And and I think you're not going to find very many athletes that will step out in the prime of their career and defend their beliefs. And I think he did a lot for mankind, and he will be forever known as the greatest of all time. Um, he, as you said, he talked it. And he walked it. He backed his up. He, he, was a, he was a guy that he was a guy that would sell you a wolf ticket, and 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 he and he'd have the cash to back it up. I know that he'd sell it to you. 
and look, buy it back from you and yep. give you the receipt with everything. And 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 that's what frustrated people so much. It's like this man would get in your face. He didn't care black, white, tall, short, fat, skinny, yep. and tell you, as the old folks say, how the cow truly ate the cabbage and backed <laughs> it up. You know, yep. and when you when you think about it, uh, in 1978, he lost the, the championship to uh, a homeboy of mine, Leon Speaks. And, man, we, we were excited. Now, we always knew Ali was the greatest. But when he got ready for that rematch, I said, don't do it, Leon. Don't do it. <laughs> and, man, he beat Leon into submission. Um, he only lost to five people, Coach. Right. Now, now I'm going to tell you one of the, one of the, the, the times that – I remember the most when he fought Ernie Shavers and Shavers would not acknowledge him as Muhammad Ali after he changed his name mm -hmm. and that man punished. He he could have gotten rid of him early on, but right. he made it a mission. He said, what's my name? What's my <laughs> name? And he was tattooing his face. Yeah, what's my name? What's my name? I can I, I remember that. I remember that. I bet he remembered for the rest of his days yeah. on from there, didn't he? Yes, that he day did. he got he always saying, Mama, here come that man again. Yep. So yep. yes, sir. So uh we, we talk about two great legends and ironically enough, one was nonviolent and one was the most violent sport known right. to man. And they they got the message across in and out of their arenas, Coach, and just an awesome thing to share. And I thank you for sharing those reflections with that. And um, we have always going to talk about our basketball. What a fantastic weekend that we had just passed during the holiday and coming up for the weekend. So, Coach, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but my Lady Panthers looking good, brother. Yes, they are. They are. Uh... Coach Pugh, uh, she, all she needed was time, and she's showing that with you all being patient with her, she has put together a phenomenal team, and uh, they're doing well. You know, they're 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 winning, uh, they're leading the swag, so they're looking good. But it was a great weekend of basketball. Uh, you know, it started last Saturday uh, down at Southern University, where Southern played host to Grambling. Southern won that game 59 and 49. That was an interesting matchup, uh, and it went down uh, to the to the fourth quarter before Southern could really uh, pull away. And then uh, on down to Tallahassee, Florida A&M played host to Arkansas Pine Bluff, and Pine Bluff uh, they didn't let the travel get to them. They beat Florida A&M 71 to 68 in that contest, and then uh, Florida. Further down at Daytona Beach, Bethune Cookman played host to Mississippi Valley. They won that game seventy to fifty five. And then uh coming on over to Houston, uh Texas Southern hosted Alcorn State. They won that game on Saturday. Uh, Alcorn won that game seventy six to sixty seven in overtime. So Texas Southern uh they played it but it went to overtime, they couldn't pull it out. And then on over to Prairie View, where your Lady Panthers played host to Jackson State, the game of the weekend. They beat Jackson State 69-65 to to break a 22- or 23-game winning streak, uh, conference winning streak for Jackson State. So uh, hats off to the Lady Panthers. And then that led us into Monday's action where uh, my Bulldogs went down to Mobile, Alabama, and hosted Alabama State, where the Lady Bulldogs won that game 60-46. to And then in Tallahassee, uh, Mississippi Valley played Florida A&M. Florida A&M won that game 69-53. Bethune-Cookman swapped opponents and played host to Arkansas Pine Bluff, and Bethune won that game 63-61. to And then uh, Jackson State rebounded after losing to your Panthers. They went over to Texas Southern, won that game 87-58. And then, of course, the, another great game on Monday night, your Prairie View Panthers 
beat Alcorn State 56 to 55. And with that being said, what when all the dust settled, your Prairie View Panthers are leading the women five with a five to one record in the conference, followed by Jackson State, Southern, Alabama A and M, and Bethune Cookman, all at four and one. So there's a log jam for second place. And the last couple of years, we all have been figuring out who was going to finish second to Jackson State. Well, now we have an answer. We have an answer now. <laughs> Prairie View said, we're going to change that narrative. And so it was an interesting week on the women's side. No doubt about it. And when you talk about Coach Q, you know, being patient, uh, of course she came with a pedigree that didn't need it. no explanation if you were anywhere remotely close, not only just to HBCU basketball, but to women's basketball. And, you know, got out the gate a little slow. But here's what you have to understand the dynamics of the coaches that came on, because she came along right along the time of Eric Dewey, right? And Mm -hmm. really listen at this, Coach, the dynamics that both of them had to endure. You went through, let's see, Ashley Robinson, uh, an intern, then Fred Washington, another intern, and then Donald Reed, and now another intern and athletic directors mm. and within a four-year. That is a lot of unstableness. Oh, yes. That's a lot of shakiness. And you got to, as they say, keep your head down and stay on the grind. And she's been able to do that. Then let's not forget the COVID interactions and right. interruptions that came about. That was two years set back. People transferring in and out and the unspoken but yet obvious mental health challenges that these student athletes are dealing with today. So we're extremely proud, even though we're still just getting out the gate for the season, but we're close to the halfway mark already, Coach. Right. And, and see, here's to, I'm, I'm going to tell you the team that we have to watch on the women's side, uh, Bethune-Cookman. And they're at 4-1, and one, but here's the problem. Because you're not playing round robin, you we're going to have to look ahead in this schedule because – but Thune Cookman could be playing teams only once, and that could be at their advantage, or it could be at their disadvantage, depending on where the games are being played. So, mm-hmm. uh, with Bethune being four and one, and, and in that log jam with all those uh, with the three other uh, teams, that that's going to be a, saying a lot down the stretch. But the women's basketball on the women's side, they're playing some great basketball. These coaches have got these ladies. Uh, moving in the right direction, and it's going to be interesting. It will be interesting down the stretch. No doubt about it. No doubt now, about it. So I... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just said we're just going to transition over to the men's side. Oh, oh yeah. On, on, on the men, yeah, on the men's side, we also had some great uh, contests over the weekend. Uh, you know, last Saturday, uh, Bethune-Cookman hosted the men of Mississippi Valley. Bethune won that game 77-71. and 71. Down at Baton Rouge, it was the battle. The game of the week was supposed to be Southern and Grambling. Southern won that game 81-73. to 73. Down at Tallahassee, Arkansas Pine Bluff went into Tallahassee, and they won that game 67-54. And coming over to Houston, Texas Southern hosted Alcorn. Alcorn won that game 79-74. And then your Panthers hosted Jackson State on Saturday, and they won that game 59-50. to uh, Going back up to Texas Southern, they lost that game in overtime to uh, Alcorn State, 79-74. to But what, what that has really done is that has put a lot of pressure on Texas Southern because they've yet to taste a, a victory as of Saturday. And then as we roll over to Monday, my Bulldogs went down to Mobile, and they hosted Alabama State. Alabama State won that game 69-61. Down at Daytona Beach, Bethune-Cookman played host to Arkansas Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff won that game 77-71. And then Florida A&M hosted Mississippi Valley. Florida A&M won that game 60-59. And then in Houston, Last night, Texas Southern 
found one, 84 to 82 over Jackson State for their first win of the season in the, in the conference. And then, of course, your Prairie View Panthers lost a tough contest the teacher versus the student, 77 and 68 in overtime. Yeah, that was a tough one, Coach. That was a tough one, man. That was a tough one. Yeah, that, that was a game that, that a lot of people were looking forward to because uh, you had the pupil versus the teacher, and it, this time around the, uh, the student won. And so what that did for the men standing, Southern is still alone at the top at 5-0. and Alcorn State is in second at four and one. Pine Bluff is in third place, four and two. Grambling Falls to three and two, along with Alabama State and Jackson State. They're all at three and two. And I guess the biggest thing is this weekend, both Texas Southern and Florida and them got got a win this weekend. So every team in the conference has at least one win. It's going to be a long, tough road for. Texas Southern and Florida in them who were picked in preseason to be in, you know, toward the top. They got a long, long way to go. Well, you know, when we talk about that, and if anyone I had confidence in was Coach Jones in Texas Southern. Right. And that win was so huge, and the way they came back against Jackson State at one time, they were down 10 to 1 out the gate, Coach. And you know more than anyone, these basketball is such a a momentum and pendulum swing of events. You could be down 20, next thing you're up, you're up by three in a matter of five minutes of playing. And that's always been phenomenal to me on how that goes in basketball. But if anyone, this could almost be how the old folk used to say that Texas Southern is playing possum. Not that they're losing intentionally, but if they can get in at a seven or eight seed in that tournament, Coach, who wants to see Texas Southern as a seven or eight seed? I'm trying to tell you, boy. That is, as a coach, you don't want that. You do not want that <laughs> because they, you know, they're, they're tournament tested. So, but uh, it's going to be interesting uh, to watch the, both both the men and women going down the stretch. Uh, we haven't made it to the halfway point there. We're almost there, but it's going to be interesting, and I'm looking forward to it. Yes, sir. Now, also looking forward to this weekend, uh, you and I, uh, before the weekend, we're going to agree to disagree at least on that Monday night, I know, huh? Oh, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that but there's is, still hope for you, Coach. There's still hope for you, Coach. We can, we, man, I think you look good in purple and gold, to be honest with you, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, it, it's gonna be an interesting uh weekend, and uh, I'm looking forward to that game on Monday night between your Panthers and my Bulldogs. Uh, and then I can tell you right now, an, another game that you, we need to keep our eye on now is Southern going into Pine Bluff. You know, with yes, Pine sir. Bluff playing as well as they are on the men's side, I think that that's going to be uh, a, a big game, a big game. Okay. Do you have any other – surprise of uh, uh, games or interest games, I should say. I know you're saying Texas Southern, Sam, you need wins, but who are you looking at right now that could make another large move toward and, bring, and making improvements between Sam and Texas Southern? Well, I, I, I think uh, with Sam being on the road going down to Alcorn, that's going to be a tough road for them now. Uh, mm-hmm. But – but with with and and Texas Southern's got to come to Huntsville, so it, it's going to be rough. Uh, the Bulldogs play well; they shoot the ball well in the event center, uh, so that that that's going to be tough. But I would say probably Texas Southern, probably with that win, they may have more momentum going uh, going since it's, it was a win uh, at home and going on the road. I think that'll help them uh, coming in. Yes, sir. But it's going to be tough. Yes, sir. Now, on the women's side, I'm going to tell you a game that's, that intrigues me. Prayer View in Alabama State, and it's only because of the coaches. Right. Not, not the team, the coaches. Hey, it's it it a room up, big enough. Up. It's a room big right. enough for both of their egos. Right, right. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. They go after each other. So, so regardless of the record, 
I, I think I think that's going to be a very intriguing game on the on the women's side. Oh wow, that that that, that is something to look forward to, and especially with the jump start that the Panthers have right now. So right. it's always going to be something uh, to look for and keep us talking, Coach. And as long as they're doing what they're doing, it gives us plenty to talk about, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, and speaking of plenty to talk about, Coach, I know that you are an astute man and you keep your eyes on the, the, the swivel and you keep your ear to the ground. Um, we've had an explosion this past week from another famous NFL Hall of Famer, um, Bethune Cookman's newest, I guess you could say higher, according to the rant. He hadn't even signed the contract yet, but Ed Reed. Um, what do you make out of all this, Coach, if anything? Well, I, there's, I, I think there's something to be said. I, I, I think you have to read between the lines. You know, he, he claims that he, he was warned by Coach Prime about how the HBCUs and the administration uh, do things just a little bit differently. And I think his biggest thing is, from what I'm taking from it, is that he has seen or he's heard about things that are not in the best interest of the student athletes at Bethune-Cookman. And he's he's talking about them up front. I think he's looking for support from uh, the fans and the alumni. And he's also, at the same time, I think he's sending a message to the uh, administration that if they want a real football program, that they've got to do things a little bit differently. And uh, I, I think there's something, I think there's something to his ranting about the way things are being handled. Okay, and I got a couple of responses to that statement, if you don't mind. Sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't, I don't mind uh, your discomfort or your um, unsatisfactory conditions that you walk into, but A, should you not discuss that before you accepted the position? B, it's not necessarily what we say, but how we say it. Yeah, you all have put up uh, Twitter and platforms and all these kind of things, but to say these type of things and then say you don't have a contract and then expect people to honor you and respect the contract, is that me or is that the mark of insanity? Well, it's a little, it's a little bit of both. And I, I think, I, I'm thinking he, what he's trying to do, he, he's trying to move the narrative because he knows he cannot do it by himself. So by, I think by going public, he's bringing this to the attention of the alumni and the people in power who can make a difference or make changes. Okay. Because I think he's and saying that he cannot, he cannot be successful as things currently are. And I understand that. But to make the statement that you came here as in a savior mentality, I think that's a bit extreme from my point of view. And maybe I'm being on the defensive side because you see these guys, and, and people need to remember, Deion Sanders and Ed Reed are not the first former NFL players to come into the Southwestern Athletic Conference and coach. And I know when these guys are on those professional levels, they're accustomed and privileged to certain things being done a certain way. And when you were aware of the conditions before you accept the job, then either you say yay or nay. And as an administrator, whether you agree or disagree with our technology and our uh, mentalities and this, that, and the other, I might have a second chance. I don't have a contract with you anyway, so I wish you can bother to draw one, draw one up. Right, but wouldn't it be a bigger backlash if you did back out? Because remember now, I don't think he said one thing that would be, I mean, that would personally benefit him. Everything he's talked about is for the welfare of the student athlete. Now, and I and I bring this to your attention. Didn't Dion do the exact same thing? As soon as he got to Jackson State, we start hearing about all everything that was lacking. I think he did the exact of same course. thing. He right. did the exact same thing, and but uh, I guess he didn't go on 
f bomb rants and oh. <laughs> things of that nature. You know, and like I say, to each his own, and everyone has a, a, a way of doing things. But I, I, I would think he would have known, or at least I had a, a virtual tour of the facilities before he said yes. Right, and then you know that if you think back now, that was one of the concerns when Bethune Cooper made the announcement that they were coming into the SWAC. They knew from the from what was going on in the MEAC that they were one of the poor athletic programs in terms of uh, facilities and the amount of money that they put towards athletics. So, see, that was a concern way back when they first joined the SWAC. And I was one of the people that said, would Bethune-Cookman be successful in the SWAC because of their financial commitment? Well, to be quite honest with you, Coach, Bethune-Cookman, coming into the conference uh, were one of the more robust budget-wise in comparison to some of the schools that are already in existence. And as a matter of fact, the ones I can call right off the top, Jackson State, Alcorn, Mississippi Valley, Pine Bluff, um, and there was one other that they were ahead of budget-wise. Well, that money must be in their salaries because it's not in the facilities. Well, not now. Facilities are, are lacking. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the gym that they play their basketball games in, some can look at it as half full, half empty. However, you choose. It's a small gymnasium and it's kind of uh, uh, outdated, but right. that can also be used to their advantage for home court advantage. Right. It's just, it's the same place that I played in when I was at Alabama A and M. So it, it's uh, <laughs> the, 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 the commit the, the commitment. The, the the commitment to the student athletes, I think, is what everybody was complaining about. Uh, because they, if, if you remember back um, a few years ago, the student athletes were boycotting and and uh, complaining about the, their treatment, tr- you know, travel arrangements, uh, the food that they were they were they were given. But see, a lot of that stuff now is going to change with the, with these new initiatives and recommendations that are coming out from the NC2A. Like all schools are going to be required to have a nutritionist. Now, how, how many do we have right now? All schools are going to be required to have a training table. How many do we have right now? So see, the 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 day is coming where <clears throat> the administration at the HBCUs. They're going to have to either do their business or they're going to have to move on. They're going to have to get out. They're going to have to get out because these these are going to be required. These are going to be minimum requirements that you have to have for these student athletes. Yes, sir. And And also talking about the NCAA. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I was also talking about the NCAA. They're just uh, pushing through now a mandate uh, for baseball coaches to right. be hired from volunteers. So, yeah, and, and what it's doing, we always talk about it. It's one, another one of these moving targets. You want to be on the deep end of the pool, then right. this is what's going to be required. Correct. And we, we, as institutions, need to say, oh, are we going to be in this thing all the way okay. or get out? Because you can't be in partially Correct. and expect to compete and expect, to be able, because another reality that we have to look at, Coach, when we talk about money coming to our programs, you no, know, I know it is very challenging for us to get butts in the seats throughout, and I'm just going to stay within the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Yeah, we do good in attendance, but to me, that's almost a hocus-pocus deal because we have these classics and we get these large numbers at neutral sites but not on our home campuses. And the only way that we're going to be able to compensate with that challenge, we're going to have to increase ticket prices. Yep. That's the only way it's going to happen because the TV deals that we are involved with, they are seeming, and I'm using that loosely and using quotations, seeming to be a bit murky uh, with some of the things that are developing, and we're still, uh, as I say, uh, researching and digging in on that but we won't open that can of worms just yet. But it, it, you, so we've got to be able 
to look in the mirror to help ourselves. And the only way it's going to happen is it's going to be about supply and demand. If you want to be a part of it, you want to see it, you're going to have to support it. You're going to have to support your uh, streaming that you do at Alabama A&M. They're going to have to support the, the broadcast we do at the open mic, and they're going to have to support these institutions with coming into the games if you have to pay a slightly higher price. Because the right. average ticket price, average ticket price goes for the NFL is $151. The average ticket price for uh, FBS college football is $175. The average price for HBCU, the Southwest Athletic Conference, is $25. Wow. We can't move the needle like that, Coach. That's, that's true. That's true. That's true. And, 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 Doc, and Doc, I'm going to tell you another point that I think that a lot of the public don't know that they're going to hear about here shortly. Another thing that the NC2A put out there, you have to put in escrow the money for a student athlete for 10 years for them to get their degree. In other words, when a, when a student comes to your institution, they're going to have 10 years, a 10-year period, where they can come back to school to get their degree. And that money has to be put out wow. there. That sounds like my old college plan, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so now, how how many schools are gonna be able to put put money out for ten years on scholarships for for student That's athletes? That's a lot of who, money. Whose eligibility have expired now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're not we're not talking about a kid that's eligible and playing right now. What about that kid that goes to that junior or senior year and does not get their degree? Well, they're going to have 10 years from the time they leave to be able to come back to have their education paid for. Yes, sir. Well, you know, the NCAA used to have a program uh, for uh, college athletes that once their eligibility was up, and I believe they had under 18 months or something like that to complete their degree, they would carry them or kind of fund them to reach that plateau. Right, but you had to apply for that, and, it, and that, that was not for everybody. That the specific people got that money. But what mm -hmm. they're saying now is if you sign a kid, <clears throat> that money has to be out there for the next 10 years. Wow. <clears throat> by the institution, not by the NC2A. That is a game changer. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, that yes. Is Coach, we've had the discussion in times past, and it might be time to revisit. And I'll just ask you flat out again, do you really believe that the Southwest Athletic Conference, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, are ready for the requirements that are coming to continue to stay at the D1 level? I think some of the schools, some of them, some of the programs I think will be able to do it. I, all programs, no, in both the MEAC and the SWAC, no. Wow. I'm about to put you on the spot, Coach. Which ones you think could do it in the swag? I think Jackson State, Texas Southern, Prairie View, Florida A&M, and I've left out my Bulldogs. Okay. I've left out Alabama State. Okay. I left out Mississippi Valley. Uh -huh. Alcorn. I think all Alcorn. I think Alcorn would step up because of football. Okay. Now in the MEAC, woo, they are already depleted. Right. The, their conference is already depleted. I. I. Okay. Probably A and T. Well, no, A and T is already gone. Um, right. Woo, probably Howard. Probably Howard. Hmm. And ironic enough, I know Howard has a rich history, but I don't see them putting as, it in athletics. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, I don't, I don't see that. Right, don't but you that. asked who I think could. They could. 
<laughs> okay, right. Yeah, well, they, yeah, have they, the, they, listen, they, could, they have the financial resources where they could do it if they so correct. chose. Correct. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, Coach, as we stated, it's a lot for us to keep watching, isn't it, my man? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, I tell you what, Coach, I truly appreciate you for uh, coming on board with us this week. Um, man, I know that uh, Monday's going to be intense. I promise you, I promise you, I will not help you one way or the other. <laughs> you know, and, and and I won't take it personal, and I don't want you to take it personal. Oh, I won't, I won't. And and more likely, uh, I'll be thinking about you while we're on the live stream, and and, uh, and, <laughs> and I might even let you know that, okay? so <laughs> oh, You know what? Because we're going to simulcast you through the open mic, so you be ready. We'll be ready for it. And, okay. uh, we're looking forward to it, Coach. It's always a joy to chat with you, sir. We're going to give you some closing thoughts and comments as we wrap this segment up. Okay, well, well, Doc, uh, I've, I've certainly enjoyed it. I, I like the uh, idea that we touch on things that are important to the people, and I just want to continue to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing because it's sorely needed, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And you're going to always be the godfather even after the beatdown on Monday. <laughs> but it's coming. It's coming, and I'm not backing down. It's coming. We're going to have that purple and gold fury going from one end of the gym to the other, sir, and we're going to have a good time enjoying it. He is the guru, the godfather of basketball here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, Coach Van Petterway. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Thank you guys so much for joining in on this segment of the Swack Zone. We are going to pause for the calls, but I promise you we'll be right back. Keep it right where you got it. Don't you go nowhere. We are the station designed with you in mind. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, where we are serving the community through faith and athletics since 2002. We are located in Prairie View, Texas, where we are dedicated to serving the local community with sporting events, church services, and information. You're invited to tune in and to join us each Sunday morning for Temple of Refuge Ministries live broadcast, Building the Kingdom One Soul at a Time, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. Each Monday through Friday, tune in to hear the Mike Prince Show as he covers the world of HBCU sports and beyond. This show has been the driving force for daily information when it comes to HBCU athletics. And tune in to listen to the Swag Zone each Saturday mornings. The Open Mic Broadcast Network covers Little League, high school, and college athletics we also broadcast local community parades and events and you can check us out on youtube for our latest content if you would like to help us support our broadcast you may do so by making a donation at www.obnradio.com we are the station designed with you in mind the open mic broadcast network where we are serving the community through faith and athletics since 2002 Good morning. It's me, Donna G, of DG Sports and Entertainment, coming to you live on the famous Mike Prince Show. So, I know, I know, you guys have been expecting me before now. Life is just happening all around us and stops for no one. My mother passed in September and my loved one got a new kidney in November. You add in the holidays, my birthday and Founders Day, this past weekend and we end up here today i did miss you guys and i also miss commentating about the hype surrounding this past football season you know i love it uh sanders leaving j state and not winning the celebration bowl amongst other things but no worries though i have some goodies for you now as we know, we are in basketball season, and boy, has it taken off in directions that we were not anticipating. Like Texas Southern finally at 1 and 5 after starting with a 0 and 5 record. This week, and after a rocky start, PV sits at number one in the sweat with a 5 to 1 conference record. Thanking Jackson this weekend with men's and women's teams. PV, you know. Followed by a four-way split of 4-1 with Jackson State, Southern, Alabama A&M, and Bethune-Cookman. Next up is Alabama State and Gremlin at 3-2, UAPB at 2-4, to 
Alcorn and FAMU at 1 to 4, TSU 1 to 5, and Valley still has not won in conference play with a record so far of 0 to 6. Now, we never want to leave the MEAC out, so their standings are as follows. Norfolk State is 3 to 0, Morgan State 2 and 0, Howard 2 and 1, Coppin State 1 and 1, North Carolina Central and Delaware State 1 and 2, South Carolina State 0 to 1, and Maryland Eastern Shore at 0 and 3. I heard and saw it was Pat in D.C. Monday night with Howard and Morehouse playing a back-in-the-day favorite. I definitely have an affinity for those two schools as I lived in D.C. many years on Georgia Avenue Northwest right down the street from Howard. And my son went to Morehouse. Okay, okay. A brief update on our schools who are not with our two big conferences, but we have love for them nonetheless. Tennessee State is at 2-4, and four, ranking 7th in the Ohio, Ohio Valley Conference. After leaving the MEAC for the Big South, but are now both in the CAA, the Colonial Athletic Conference, North Carolina A&T is 5-1, tied with Drexel University, pretty cool, uh, but listed at second place. And Hampton, although tied with Delaware, Thompson, and Northeastern at 3-2, and two, is at seventh place. So, looks like a great start for more, most schools. Only a few have not won games, but we know there's a lot of games to be played, and how you start is not always how you finish. So we wish good luck to all the teams, but especially those struggling to start the season off with a win. All right. Now, I am curious what you have to say about the Ed Reed statement. Feel free to leave comments on the DG Sports and Entertainment page on social media platforms of Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with the handle DG Sports ENT. Again, that's DG Sports ENT. DG Sports ENT. I will review comments, incorporate my own, and get back with you soon. Well, it's been a pleasure today, and as we wind down, I want to leave you on this note. What did you do to perpetuate Dr. King Jr.'s dream that eventually turned into reality, although we have a ways to go? Dr. King said darkness cannot drive out hate, only light can be that. Hate can I drive out hate. Only love can do that. So I wish you all love and light today and the days ahead. God bless. Talk to you soon. A Rocket Movers and Storage, located at 3354 Yellowstone Boulevard, Houston, Texas. Be sure to contact James Woods at 713-545-0658. If you're looking for movers, a place to store your items, or if you need both, our good fellas at A Rocket Movers and Storage can get you a two for one. So head on down there now. That's A Rocket Movers and Storage, and let them know that the Open Mic Broadcast Network sent you. Also, be sure to listen to the Mike Prince Show daily by subscribing to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. The Mike Prince Show, Dissect and Prairie View Athletics, and all news and updates surrounding the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And again, you can check out the show daily by subscribing to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station design with you in mind. Jackson State football coach T.C. Taylor is living his dream. His first 25 days on the job have been busy and pleasant. He has gone from taking orders from Deion Sanders to giving them. He recently returned from a coach's clinic, interviewing coaches to fill openings on a staff. One of the most important qualities he is looking for is the right fit into the JSU culture. The entire coaching staff will not be new. Taylor will keep defensive line coach Jeff Weeks and director of player personnel Otis Ridley. His goal is to hire coaches that have high character and are good recruiters and teachers. Taylor will have to hire a strength and conditioning coach. I'm looking for leaders of men and coaches that can help me develop this football team. When I say the right strength guys and offensive and defensive coordinators you will hear those guys' names coming up shortly. Another of Taylor's concentrations has been recruiting and replacing the players that entered the transfer portal. So far, JSU has lost 7 to Colorado and 1 to Louisville. The focus has been on getting the right guys in here, Taylor said. 
Taylor said there are about 80 players returning and getting ready for spring workouts. JSU has signed three quarterbacks to the roster after losing Southwestern Athletic Conference Player of the Year Shadur Sanders and his backup J.P. Andrade. Sanders threw for 40 touchdowns and 3,732 yards. Sanders transferred to the University of Colorado to play for his dad, Deion Sanders. Andrade was a senior that saw time in mop-up duty. The other quarterbacks on the roster were redshirt sophomore Grayson Thompson, Matthew Ricciardi Vitali and Norman Douglas Jr. We've only signed three quarterbacks that will be participating here next year, Taylor said. The quarterback position was depleted. We had guys hit the portal and we really were not bringing anything back. You know how important that position is to the team. We needed help and that is what we wanted to address this spring. We got guys we could evaluate. Taylor has some very good players that were in the portal but decided to return to JSU. The defense will return linebacker Niles Gaddy and all SWAC performer along with defensive back Keevrick Wiggins Jr., who played in 13 games. The defense was number one in the SWAC conference, allowing 10.3 points a game. During the early signing period, the team addressed skill positions. Now, Taylor is keying in on offensive and defensive linemen. We want to preach a physical brand of football at Jackson State, Taylor said. I know that starts up front, and not only that, but if you want to improve your strength level, you have to recruit it. One of the goals for me is I want to get stronger and more physical up front for the spring. Jackson State is currently putting together its spring practice schedule and schedule for the season. We are the station designed with you in mind. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, where we are serving the community through faith and athletics since 2002. We are located in Prairie View, Texas, where we are dedicated to serving the local community with sporting events, church services, and information. You're invited to tune in and to join us each Sunday morning for Temple of Refuge Ministries live broadcast, Building the Kingdom One Soul at a Time, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. Each Monday through Friday, tune in to hear the Mike Prince Show as he covers the world of HBCU sports and beyond. This show has been the driving force for daily information when it comes to HBCU athletics. And tune in to listen to the Swag Zone each Saturday mornings. The Open Mic Broadcast Network covers Little League, high school, and college athletics. We also broadcast local community parades and events. And you can check us out on YouTube for our latest content. If you would like to help us support our broadcast, you may do so by making a donation at www.obnradio.com. We are the station designed with you in mind. The Open Mic Broadcast Network, where we are serving the community through faith and athletics since 2002. Welcome to the first segment of Yeah, I Said It, which is a new segment that was uh, put on by the Open Mic Network. We would like to thank them for uh, giving us the opportunity to weigh in on different issues and HBCU-related, um, sports-related. Um, so here we go. We uh, we have uh, Benjamin Edwards. Yep, yep. Yeah. Ben, um, and we have myself, Jack White the Third, um, your your two hosts for the new segment called "Yeah, I Said It." Um, ben, this week I think we have a, a couple of topics. Um, we have the Ed Reed situation, where he criticized Bethune Cookman on the um, facilities and other different things. We can talk about that, and then we can. Uh, end the segment talking about uh, Jalen Jones, who's a Bethune-Cookman quarterback that has left Bethune-Cookman and is going on to Charlotte. Um, yeah, it seems like Bethune-Cookman has a lot of uh, internal concerns going on, you know, firing their football coach, bringing in another uh, NFL Hall of Famer um, who had a rocky, you know, first couple weeks criticizing mm-hmm. the university, and now your starting quarterback is left. So a lot of going on at Bethune Cookman right now. Yeah, and I, I don't necessarily have a problem with Ed Reed criticizing the um, you know facilities, things like that. I just don't like the way he went about it. Um, instead of airing the dirty laundry to the world, I think uh, Brother Reed could have you know, went to the administration first. Um, I think that's where you start. That's where you start. You know, you don't uh, air it out to the world. What, what's your thoughts on that? I, I think it's kind of twofold, so um, I'll jump on the university first. Um, the university hired him. They hired him for a reason, to bring some excitement um, to their university, um, hoping probably to keep some of the young men from Florida 
from leaving and um, to uh, come on campus to play for him. So I think the university, from what I saw, uh, what he was talking about, they at least could have made sure his environment um, that he's going to be working in uh, was cleaned and uh, uh, arranged appropriate. Uh, who wants to go to a house or apartment for the first time and it's dirty? Most of us, if, <clears throat> if that was the case, we would have told the landlord, hey, you know what, I'm going to take my deposit back and move on somewhere else. But at the same time, right. I think the twofold part of that is I think uh, I'm wondering whether um, some of these young people, the Ed Reeds, I'm saying that they're young, but they're about my age, um, mm -hmm. that are coming from these PWIs, um, are they being spoiled? You know, uh, mm -hmm. what Ed Reed had at the University of Miami, probably nothing comparable to what he's dealing with at Bethune Cookman. So I think sometimes um, people forget from where they came from, and they think everything is going to be just as luxury as where they left, and pretty much uh, life is not like that. Well, that's, yeah, that's my other point, too, is like, okay, before he accepted the job, I mean, didn't he have a tour of the campus and facilities before accepting the job? I mean, um, yeah, but, you know, a lot of times, like, people say the, uh, the employee that he mm -hmm. puts on a facade, you know, I'm the best candidate. Right. You know, I, I got the best suit on. And then you realize, mm -hmm. hell, he only got one suit. <laughs> That's the same suit he wear every day. But then the right. company puts on a facade also. They want to show you donuts and lemonade and ice with, uh, I mean, water with ice. And then <laughs> when you get there, you get a refrigerator in, uh, in the cafeteria, and it don't work. So it's yes. a game. It's both sides play, you know, trying to audition for each other. Uh, but I do agree that both sides could have done a better job um, mm -hmm. if this is the uh, venture that they're going to go down. Got you. Okay. Some good points, some good points. So now we can go on to uh, Jalen Jones. Okay, so um, do you have a rundown of all the places he's gone or where he started? And do you have that written down? Um, I, I, I don't have it written down, but I did kind of go over his uh, college bio, it says mm -hmm. that he started at, at the uh, University of um, Florida. Um, okay. So um, he left Florida, um, said that there were some concerns, um, didn't really go into detail what his concerns is, and not necessarily my responsibility to uh, talk about it, mm -hmm. what his concerns are. And then I think he ended up going to uh, Jackson State, um, mm -hmm. then Jackson State to a community college, and then from the community college to Bethune-Cookman. And now, for whatever reason, um, we don't know, did he leave because the coach got fired or could he not handle the pressure as well? <laughs> I, I hate to even say his name, but um, as Dion said, could he not handle the pressure? And so he mm -hmm. just chose to get off the boat. Um, so he's going to, I think, the University of Charlotte, I believe. Charlotte. Yes, that's yeah. right. So in what? In his four years or five years of sport, he's gone to, you know, four or five different, you know, programs. Um, but in this day and time, I've heard someone say that we live in a generation where young people probably, they work on a job somewhere between six to nine months before they move on. So if that's the mm -hmm. case, I see right on target. <laughs> he's right. <laughs> right on target and on pace. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um. I know Bethune Cookman had a forgettable 2022 season, but um, from Jones' standpoint, uh, he was pretty solid. He was uh, completing 57% of his passes and threw for 14 touchdowns to seven interceptions. Um, you know, he also showed off his legs, were gaining better than 800 yards on the ground while running for five touchdowns. So even though the the team as a whole had a rough season or a forgettable season. Um, looks like Jalen Jones um, had a solid enough uh, season to get a commitment from Charlotte. So, well, um, you know, good luck to him um, in his uh, senior year. Uh, he's going to Conference USA, so um, uh, hopefully he can get the exposure, I guess, um, that he's looking for. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a prime example of that portal, it just being 
it might not be in what everybody think it is. You know, for a person to move four or five times, it's like, wow, you know, what really can you learn moving that often? But, again, not bashing the young man. Um, I know he wants to live his dream, so it's not my job to bash on it. Um, I hope that he has a successful career um, at Charlotte. Hopefully he doesn't get injured. I'm glad that he doesn't have to play against PV this year. So um, um, good luck to him. And as far as Bethune Cookman, um, hopefully uh, cooler heads will prevail. And um, uh, Coach Reed, uh, I wonder what would he call him. Can we say Ed or do we say Mr. Reed, Coach Reed? Um, I got another name, but I'm going I'm to keep that in mind. Hold that one. Okay. <laughs> I'll hold that one right now since we got that topic. Yeah, I said it. But uh, uh, hopefully he brings, you know, talent back to the university because the more teams that are competitive in the SWAC, the better the SWAC will be. And uh, who wants to hear, you know, Florida and m thinking that they can rule that side now that Dion is gone. So I'm hoping the best for him. Um, I like uh, Baltimore Ravens. And uh, uh, like I said, good luck to him. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, this, this this is our first segment of the uh, Yeah, I Said It. You know, we hope that our inputs and some of the questions that we have out there that um, anybody can chime in um, on the YouTube channel, you know, uh, click that like button and subscribe. But um, let us know which, what you think and uh, give us some topics for possibly next week. So um, signing off, we've got, we got Benjamin Edwards. Um, any, any final words? No, just know that um, we're not going to just stick in the state of Florida. So uh, we will be coming to other universities talking about um, your situation. So um, Gucci, we coming. We you, we gonna steal Dion's theme theme music. We coming, yeah. Gucci. We coming. <laughs> yeah, you know uh, TSU, we coming. Uh, Prairie View, we coming. So um, if you have an issue, uh, don't let me read about it because I plan on bringing it to everybody's attention. So that's all I have. Yeah. To say. Yeah, and that's, and that's, yeah, we did say it. Yes, we said it. And we'll see you next week.